Well, I've been you? muted the whole time. Oh, Hello, everyone. I, I have like... a hardware mute button. Perfect. Is that just me? Am I the only one who no, it's just the day it is. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to the Battlesnake CubeCon Cup. My name is Joe, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host Aurora. How are you doing today? I am well, Joe, and I'm better now that I realize that I can hear you, and that you know it's not a completely crazy day. <laughs> no, you can. I just have too many mute buttons, and all of them are on. Every single one of them is on. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is the CubeCon Cup. If you are not familiar with Ballasnake, we are going to tell you all about that. Do not worry. But this is a very special event for us. We're very excited to be here and to be hanging out with all of you. I hope you've been having a wonderful CubeCon. Um, mm. I. I know it's been going for a couple of days. My Twitter feed has been full with Kubas um, yes. having a I good feel time. Like everyone I follow on Twitter is like giving a talk or attending a talk. It's uh, it's very exciting. Such a great big it's conference and exciting. a delight that we get to be a part of it. Absolutely. It's a little bit scary being on the Cloud Native channel. This is oof. Um, anyway, what is Battlesnake? Let me tell you all about Battlesnake. Mm -hmm. Prepare so, to have your life changed now that you're going to know about Battlesnake. <laughs> I hope y'all don't like free time. It's very addictive. So Battlesnake is a programming game where you create APIs that uh, effectively respond to a game of Snake. So you set up a little web server that uh, you then enter into the game and that web server represents your Snake. And then your Snake gets put into games. It gets API requests that represent the state of the game and you return the move for your Snake. That sounds a bit abstract. Let's jump into a game and demonstrate. And I'm going to demonstrate with some of the snakes which are competing in this very here KubeCon Cup. Because you're here to watch the finals. Uh, these snakes battled it out on Monday in an exhibition um, where it was just like a little, little bit of a friendly game. They spent three hours in a tutorial with you and Brad, right, Aurora? That is correct. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so they Monday folks gathered, learned about Battlesnake, built their first snakes, and then we kicked off a little tournament. Um, and this one, the games in that tournament, it was a great showing. Um, I've actually not restarted this game. There we go. Um, it was a great show. What's going on here? Let me rewind that. There we go. Um, it was a really fantastic showing. Um, everyone did great considering, you know, they'd been playing for mere hours. Um, so let's jump into this game and show you what it's all about. So on this board, you will see four snakes and you will also see a lot of pumpkin spice lattes. Um, <laughs> the uh, seasonal food of choice for battle snakes right now. Exactly, exactly. These are the foods. If you are not familiar with the game of snake, basically you have snakes on a board, little 2D board, and the snakes, whenever they eat food, grow in size. And you are eliminated by hitting the wall, by starving out by not eating enough food or by colliding with the body of a snake could be your snake or another snake or by colliding with the head of a bigger snake um, so what you're seeing here is four snakes we've got he him hiss on the right pasavedo in the bottom right uh sandeep's cubecon battle snake in the top middle and snake tilt 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 in the bottom left and this is some information we have about the game and this turn of the, and the state of the game so right now we're on turn zero this game has not started um and we have these little numbers down the side each of these numbers represents the length of that snake so each of these snakes have three segments right now the head the body and the tail you can't see those other two segments because the snakes haven't started so they're coiled up and ready to go um, and then this bar is their health bar it starts at 100 and every turn it will tick down by one and to refill that bar they need to eat a food and when they eat a food their length will increase by one so does everyone get the rules so far everyone yeah. understand that part of it because now i'm going to hit play and that's where the fun begins yeah so are and you ready Aurora? Question in chat here is like, do you use AI for the snakes? And like, right. yes, and everything in between. So each mm -hmm. of these battle snakes is built by an individual developer in a programming language of their choice, hosted on a platform of their choice. Um, so long as it responds and implements the battle snake REST API uh, correctly, uh, you can interact yes. and play a game of battle snake. And uh, how folks build their battle snake is up to them. Um, Rule based snakes, sort of like a whole stack of develop statements for conditions, is a surprisingly effective strategy. But there are folks out there doing heavy machine learning and AI based snakes. We've seen neural networks at play. We've seen, you know, hosts of uh, tree pruning strategies for trying to do rule advancement. Uh, there are research papers out there on the topic of yeah. Battlesnake. So really, it's a, a huge open book for how a developer can approach this problem and interact with it and build and grow and practice their programming skills in a really fun, exciting project. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the the range of to give a, an example of how ridiculous the range of things get. You know, we get the uh, Aurora saying you can build it in anything, use any infrastructure, any programming language. Uh, we had a live stream a couple of weeks ago where someone built a Snake entirely in raw Bash. They built a web server in Bash and played the game in Bash. We have uh, some kind of meme snakes using uh, face control, like computer vision, guided by the position of people on webcams. It's You can do, as long as you return moves, you can do the sky is the limit. Um, and we'll dive into, I think we'll look at some brackets, not brackets, so we'll look at one of the arenas in a minute and show the range of um, strategies that are at play. Um, but this being just a couple of hours uh, that these people build these snakes, in this game, they've had a whole week to iterate on them since. Um, but in this game, as you were saying, probably mostly, you know, if statements going on here, right? Pretty yeah. fair to say? Yeah. Some fresh baby snakes freshly hatched? From freshly the hatched. Lines? I don't know. <laughs> Some freshly hatched if statements. Yeah. Um, so, ooh, I press, I, pr ah, I hit space. <laughs> God, this is going well. Okay, let's kick this game off. You can watch. I promise you all. I've done this before. <laughs> I put my hand down too heavy on the space bar. There we go. So, this is a full speed game. We will be watching games a tad slower today, but I wanted to get through this so you can see it. So, as you can see, the snakes are moving around. They're grabbing food. As they're grabbing food, they're getting bigger. You've got snakes spiraling in the corner for a little bit for some safety before they need to go and hunt that food. Passivado, you can see that health bar got real low, like S Snakes is right now. It'll get low and then it'll go on the hunt for some food. Or it got gobbled up by Passivado. And that is the life cycle of a battle snake. And here we saw a great thing that we're going to see time and again today. You get long, you eat lots of food, you worm your way into a corner, and goodbye snake. So there's lots of fun things going on here. You know, if we rewind a little bit, we've got uh, a snake, you know, minding their own business in the corner, just keeping safe. But because they're not out there getting food, they are not the biggest snake on the board. And so that leaves Passivado the opportunity to come up and take out that snake. And then equally, Passivado... He's got some size advantage, has been using that to good effect, been gobbling up other snakes, but then has got themselves into a corner and doesn't have the planning, the pathing to back up that size, that hunger for growth, and has gone into the corner. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of things you expect from a game. Are there any comments? I mean, there's a question here in snake, a question here in chat, what is the best snake? And I feel like I have to address this because there's no such thing as one best yeah. snake. Uh, so we're watching right now uh, standard games, which we will do for the tournament. So this is your classic, pure vanilla, you know, snake, battle snake game. Um, but you'll notice as we watch the tournament, there are a lot of strategies, staying shy, staying small, avoiding confrontation, maybe being aggressive right. and attacking. Um, each of these battle snakes, when selecting a move, have 500 milliseconds to respond. So there's dancing that edge in your machine learning algorithms about how deep are you diving, how far forward in the future are you trying to predict, and how much time do you have to do that? So right. as we've seen in a variety of battle snake tournaments, there are a host of strategies uh, that one can try. So I will leave it up to you, the viewer, to decide what is the best battle yeah. snake. Um, one thing I also add, took on. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was going, one thing I'll also add onto that is, um, you know, what we've just seen here is a standard game mode. That's what we're going to be playing today. But uh, there are a whole host of game modes. There are duels, which is one on one, says Royale. So, you know, a snake that's dominant in one game mode may not be dominant in another. So we change things up a lot. We change the game modes. We change the way that games are played. We add new obstacles. And so battle snakes are having to constantly evolve as well, which keeps people and their algorithms on their toes. So. Next question in chat. Excellent question. Thanks all for asking. Um, is what we're looking at a replay or uh, calling all the snake servers based on the game state at any given step? Do you want to? Do you want to answer that, Joe? Talk. Maybe yes. Move yeah, into absolutely. what we're going to see for the tournament. Yes, so this is a replay. This is a replay from a game on Monday. However, this does give us a good opportunity to address something that we actually speak about in chat a minute ago about DDoSing snakes. Um, all of the games we're going to be watching today are replays. These are replays generated from games. We are going to be playing some games live today. They're, being, they're happening right now as we speak, in fact, but we are going to be watching the replays. Um, that is going to be important for... Do you want to dive into the tips? Should we go straight over to the tips and dive oh, into yeah. that? Let's, let's dive into the tips. If you're watching and cool. you're participating today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me throw over to this. There we go. Cool. Wait, well, you've got I, the tips. Think... Are you have tips on here? Okay, cool. We'll do the tips on this one. So, uh, the if you are participating today, there's a couple of things that you should be aware of. Uh, maybe I don't have the tips. Okay, there's a couple of things that you should be aware of. So, as we were alluding to, um, these games are kind of ran in the past. And so, um, 
if you, for example, see your snake does something non-ideal or your snake times out and it runs out the board or something like this, uh, you might be tempted to go and live patch that and deploy. But again, we're watching that game in the past. Your snake may already be entered into the next game by the time we are watching it because the games run and then we play the we play the replay and cast it for you here. So try not to deploy during this period. Once we start the games, try not to deploy. Deploys are risky. We, you know, us casters here, we are generous. Um, if we see a snake is timing out and flying off the board and it looks like it might just be a server that needs waking up, and we'll come to that in a moment, um, we will try and try and make some space and time uh hold time a little bit for you to maybe give that server a poke but we would highly recommend if you are competing right now go and make sure your servers are awake if you are using a free hosting service such as the heroku free tier glitch.com repelit if you're using something like that make sure your servers are awake give those snakes a poke make sure that those services are up and running because when the first game goes they are going to need to be awake um other tip, oh yeah, so a tip that we came up in chat. Um, when you create a battle snake, you have the option of making it public or private. A public snake can be put in a game by anyone. Um, for the tournament, highly recommend you leave your snakes on private just because uh, you don't want your snake to be DDoSed. And what do I mean by that? Uh, if someone goes to put your snake in a bunch of games while you're playing, your server's getting more requests, especially if it's a free server, um, that may be a problem. So stick your snakes on private what am i missing tips what other tips do we have i think this covers it don't don't Perfect. deploy now sit back watch the games um because the games are being run just a couple of minutes ahead of broadcast yeah. if you don't want to have spoilers don't watch those server logs uh <laughs> that's another good one yeah yeah you will know what's happened that's also if you are competing you know what happened you know you know as sorry you know what's happened before we do before the viewers do please do not post those spoilers in the chat be a well be a be a uh, well behaved conscientious competitor okay so shall we take a look at the tournament today so actually one thing i do want to mention um as i said we did the exhibition cup the other day um there was some fantastic snakes we're going to be seeing them all again today we have uh these are the snakes ready to go ready in their brackets and we'll explain how this works in a moment but it we absolutely you know cannot go into this new tournament without talking about how these competitors did in the tournament last week so we have uh, a couple of snakes who did very well. Sandy, we've got the top four snakes: Sandy Snake, Pasavedo, Sandeep's Cucumber Battle Snake, He Him Hiss. These snakes got to the top four. That is the finals. Um, and then we had a uh, our winner, our winning game. We'll play in a moment. But I'm realizing that I'm talking about finals. Would you like to explain how the tournament works? <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. So I'm just gonna just gonna bring up a, a little. Um... Uh, schedule here. So what has happened so far, let's bring you folks up to speed, is on Monday, October 11th, uh, myself and Brad from Battlesnake ran a tutorial and a Q&A session uh, from, I believe, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time, and then immediately ran an exhibition tournament. So at most, participants had three hours to put together a uh, standard Battlesnake using one of our template starter Battlesnakes. Uh, so if you're interested in building your own Battlesnake, definitely check out docs.battlesnake.com. It has all of the getting started info. Uh, but these folks powerhoused through that process, ran through an exhibition, um, which Joe will be uh, previewing for us. And this is all in preparation. They had the rest of the week uh, to get their Battlesnakes ready for today's tournament, which is gonna be for some fabulous prizes. So this is the tournament <laughs> that matters. The first one was a warm up and exhibition, but uh, today we do have some prizes available. So the top eight participating battle snakes are going to receive uh, a $25 gift card to the CNCF store, as well as a $25 gift card to the battle snake store. So you can also perhaps sport one of these fine uh, t-shirts that Joe and I are wearing. <laughs> um, Top four is going to receive a $50 uh, gift card for each of those stores, as well as a Battlesnake t-shirt. So you can spend that gift card on some other items. And first is going to receive a grand total of $200 in store card uh, credits, uh, as well as a Battlesnake t-shirt. Uh, so these are, these are the stakes. Uh, highly desirable stakes, in my opinion. <laughs> they are indeed. They're beautiful t-shirt. The notebook especially is really nice. Oh yeah, I have a, I have a couple of those myself. 
Um, and uh, just a reminder for everyone, so um, for this tournament and of course for all of KubeCon, uh, we have adopted the um, CNCF Code of Conduct. Uh, so definitely if you haven't had an opportunity to check this out, please do so. Um, uh, definitely important to be familiar and we will be adhering to that for this stream and this tournament. Wonderful. So we've just heard quick quick notice to the competitors. We are starting to run the games. Seashore deploys, don't change anything. The games are running. Your snakes are in games. So the part the time has passed for deploys. Beautiful. All right. So to warm ourselves up, let's maybe get an eye on the competition. Uh, maybe we can review some of those exhibition games there, Joe. Uh, take a look great. at what we've got going on there. <laughs> sure thing. So um, as I said, we had four snakes which made it into the top four. Um, just to quickly run through those brackets. Here we go. So this was uh, this is today's bracket, but just to give you an idea of how it worked. We started with group stages, uh, groups of three. Those snakes, uh, the, the snakes that won from that, progressed up to semi-finals and then made it into the finals. And all of these stages were incredibly competitive. Um, it was. Uh, I feel like I say this, you know, every time we do a battle snake, a new, a new battle snake competition with a new crowd. But I do feel like it gets more competitive every time. Um, <laughs> but everyone did a, had a really fantastic showing. But it did leave us with these four finalists, and that was Sandy Snake by William H. Sue, Pasavedo by Pasavedon. Sandeep's Cucon Battle Snake, who, since we watched that replay just a moment ago, has uh, added some styling to their snake, which is lovely to see. Um, and the wonderfully named He Him Hiss by Cameron Curatori. Uh, we actually have a game of one of their finals matches. I believe this was the. Was this the winning game? Was this the game I showed earlier? I believe we have the winning game. Uh, finals game five. I believe we do have this. Give me one second. That may have been the one we watched. Uh, yes, it was I the one we watched. So. so we watched the winning yeah, game yeah. perfectly. Uh, great, we'll uh. review that game. Um, so yeah, they were all uh, thoroughly entertaining. We do have uh, some some other standouts that were really interesting and that they kind of came into the competition swinging, had a good go, uh, but due to various tech troubles on the day we had some replit servers not behaving and this kind of thing um didn't make it quite as far as we want so i want to give a special shout out to mr wick who has been hanging out in our discord server all week i'm very excited to see what mr wick has pulled out and also cromillo who uh with kubecon cup 2021 um Mr. Wick originally entered Wicked Snake. It looks like we've got a second snake coming up for Mr. Wick. Mm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what Mr. Wick pulls out. Let's go have a little look at the uh, the KubeCon bracket and see what we've got in the in the uh, in terms of the snakes competing today. So, with the um, as as Aurora mentioned, you can kind of build in anything, and we have a little tag system to facilitate this, so we get an idea of who is running what. So these tags here describe, you know, we've got the programming language, we've got, um, in some cases, we've got the infrastructure, Repolit. These blue tags are um, the. I guess you could say the personalities. That's obviously <laughs> very subjective. Uh, this this person has tagged their snake as huggable, which. Yeah. Um, so, so confession, uh, Joe, this is actually my test snake that I built during the tutorial, my KubeCon uh, cup test snake. And You've it is got an account here. called Rory. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an alternate version uh, of my I name. See. Um, but uh, oh, consider this like your pace car battle okay. snake. Um, it has a aggressive <laughs> strategy of tracing the edge of the board. Um, which is only going to get you so far. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, we've got a good range here. I was honestly surprised in the exhibition that we had relatively few ghost snakes. I thought being KubeCon, there would be would be a wash with ghost snakes. We have three. Um, we've got a lot of JavaScript. We've got a lot of Python. We don't have anything especially weird. Um, I like Sandy Snake using the badly coded tag. This is actually in reference to one of our regular recurring Twitch shows, uh, a snake from that show. But, you know, I support everyone in saying that their snake is badly coded. <laughs> um <laughs> Definitely Sorry, a question from chat. Any uh, Kubernetes snakes, at least? It's hard to tell. So developers have to reveal this information about themselves. Uh, but uh, right. hopefully, some folks had chances. You can, however, rest assured that the Battlesnake infrastructure is hosted on a Kubernetes cluster. So I promise you it's in there. 
um and just to briefly dip back you know i mentioned these top four competitors and showed you this this thing let's talk about how this tournament works so the group stages um we will see each of these snakes play twice so we'll run a group stage the winner will advance and they will be removed from the group stage and we'll run it again and so in this case you know there's three snakes they'll play one of those snakes will win and advance and then the remaining two will play it again so every snake gets two chances to advance um, and then when we get to the semi-finals it's the same situation uh two snakes advance to stay behind and then the finals is the first to three wins so that's not best of three it is the first snake to win three games so it can go for quite a long time as it goes back and forth we had a bit of that situation on the exhibition tournament on monday where we had uh he him hiss initially it, which way around was it no Passavedo took the first two wins um what was looking fairly without challenge uh they, they it was looking like we were going to get a sweep all the way through to three and then we had a couple of games where Sandy Snake and Sandeep's Keep Kong Gap Battle Snake um, suddenly seemed to have changed their behavior. Obviously, the, the environment was right. The, the, the starting positions were such that they were able to get an edge they didn't have before. And that set the stage for a reverse sweep where he, him, his came from zero all the way through to three wins in one go. It was a super exciting time. Um, and so hopefully we're going to see something a little bit like that today. Um, let me quickly roll over to this. How are we doing in chat? Has everyone, has anyone got any questions before we move to go ahead? Yeah, I'll just answer some questions. So one question that's popped up, are the snakes uh, open source? And if so, where can we see the source? So that is up to the developer's discretion. Um, we do have a collection of the battle snake infrastructure is open source, including all of our starter projects. So uh, once again, definitely hit up, um, I should bring this up. Let's bring up a URL for you folks so you can find it. I can it. also go there. Uh, definitely hit play.battlesnake.com. Uh, that is the home page. Our, our documentation and uh, see our community contributions. Um, some Battlesnake developers may choose to make, um, to advertise that their Battlesnakes are open source. Uh, so definitely poke around. There is a beautiful, awesome list uh, maintained by one of our community members, which links to a variety of Battlesnake resources, including open source, sna or open source snakes, uh, testing tools and other sort of third party yeah. uh, bits. So I'll throw this in the Twitch chat. Oh, yeah. There is a plethora of yeah. Battlesnake resources yeah. out there for you folks. Yes. And this is real long. And some of the tools in here are really impressive. One thing I do want to call out here as well um, there is uh, GitHub tags. If you go to the Battlesnake tag, you will find a collection of all the things tagged Battlesnake, all the repositories tagged Battlesnake, including our official ones, as well as the community member ones. And you can set up email updates to get the latest news from this collection as well, which is well worth doing. Um, and I've already mentioned the docs. Um, on the docs, there's a couple of things here to, thanks for the new cookie warning. Um, there's a couple of things here to keep an eye on. Uh, the quick start guide, if you're, if, you're first dive, if you're diving in for the first time, it's a great place to start. And then our starter projects give you, uh, you know, we've got some officially maintained starter projects in a bunch of popular languages, but then the community, um, you know, just constantly, keeps creating new starter snakes in various things there's even a node red one if you what if you're like i want to play battle snake but don't really want to write a whole bunch of code sam mashin has made a no uh, a node red low code um star snake so there's all kinds of things in there mm -hmm. okay well i'm hearing that we are good to kick off the games are you ready or yeah, have we made these folks wait long enough? We've prepped you. This is Battlesnake. I think we have. Let's get into some wonderful Close games for this uh, Kube, yeah. uh, KubeCon Cup. KubeCon? <laughs> <laughs> very, I'm very <laughs> conscious of the pronunciation of Kube at the moment. Um, so just to refresh, these are the standings for today. So we're going to quickly whip through the groups and then dive into the first game. So we're going to be seeing Group A play first. We're going to be seeing two games from Group A. Each of these snakes has a has two chances to advance. And Group A is going to be SK KubeCon, Sandeep's KubeCon Battle Snake, and Wicked Snake. Then we're going to move over to Group B, and we're going to see Purple KubeCon Snake, Sandy Snake, and Clueless Snake. I don't recall seeing Purple KubeCon Snake on Monday. That's exciting. Um, we might get a you know, get some surprise upsets. Then we've got KubeCon Cup 2021, KubeCon Cup Test Snake, which now I know is you as an imposter, Passivado. So we've got the finalists are well spread out um, through these brackets, which is nice. Yeah. And then Group D, he, him, hiss, Ekmek the Snake, and Emily, Emily drinks tea snake. That's... Mm -hmm. Definitely I have refreshed that. and everything has changed. Let's do that again. <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Fine. I, yeah. I definitely have to say there's a, a meta game here of creating battle snake names and designs to trip us up. So yes. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely they're absolutely is. <laughs> um sorry about that. We had outdated brackets. I loaded these brackets up before the show and the brackets have changed. So ignore everything I just told you. Let's run it again. So group A is Arya Stark, which is by Mr. Wick. He him hiss. Emily drinks tea. Group B is Coupon Cup 2021 by Cromillo, Sandy Snake, and Cluda Snake by Proto Kit. Group C is Purple Cubecon Snake, SK Cubecon, and Pasavedo. Group D is Cubecon Cup Test Snake, Sandeep's Cubecon Battle Snake, and Ekmek the Snack. There we go. Let's run the game before anything else changes. Okay. Game one. Let's go. Well, uh, let me get the zoom level where I want it to be. There we go. Okay, so this is a this view is a little bit different to the previous one. We haven't got the pumpkin spice lattes, but just as a reminder, these are the foods. These are the snakes. This is the current length. You want to be watching the current length because the biggest snake is going to be able to get those head to heads, and you want to be watching this health bar. When this gets low, that snake is in risk of starving out. And then the other thing to watch, you can't see it right now, but when we start the game, you will see another number under the length, which is the latency. So as Aurora said earlier, the snakes have 500 milliseconds to send a response from their servers. If they do not send a response, they time out. During a timeout, the last sent move gets repeated. So if you see a, I actually believe we have an icon for it now. It's not a red zero anymore, is it? There's an exclamation point icon that pops up. <laughs> yeah, it's um, switched up, yeah. Yeah, if you see a little exclamation icon next to latency, that means a timeout. And uh, we did see quite a lot of that happening last time when uh, during intense move placements, some algorithms were evidently hitting the ceiling of what they were capable of doing in the time. Um, so that's good to go. So are you ready? Should we do a countdown for our first oh. game of the tournament? Absolutely. From from three, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, from three. Okay, across across the Pacific, we're going to be really out of sync. Okay. Please <laughs> fine. All right. Three. Three, two, two one. one. Battle, Battle snake. snake. Okay, we've got early food grabs. Some or oh, everyone, everyone's e equal now. Um, he him hiss the first up to five food. Uh, there's a lot. Oh, head to head, and that's he him hiss going through. Emily drinks tea, and uh, Arya Stark just having. I mean, there was. Some of these, um, some of these snakes are evidently based off of our Snarter Snake code, which gives them a kind of is is encouraging a safe random walk strategy. Um, but in this case, uh, it, it did not pan out for these two snakes, and they had a quick head to head. Yeah. So that was a good game to kick us off. Um, and just worth clarifying here because Emily uh, drinks tea, and uh, it was uh, he him his if I got that correctly because they are the same length. Both battle snakes would. Oh, are you stark? Are you stark? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, had one yeah. of those battle snakes been larger than the other, they would have emerged from that collision uh, safely. Correct. But because they're the same length, double elimination. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great call out. And I do also want to call out um, Emily Drink Tea here because uh, Emily Drink Tea Snakes was one of the ones that was timing out on Monday due to some server issues. I am so happy to see that snake running and worming about and doing its thing. Congrats, Emily Drinks Tea. Um, and congrats, he, him, his for being our first snake to go through. But that's not it for Emily Drinks Tea and Arya Stark. They do have an opportunity. They took each other out in a head-to-head -head, and now they are going to be dueling on their own. This is a very pleasing board, and that gives me an opportunity to explain something. So the game starts are quasi-random in that snakes will always be in this kind of second from last row slash column. There will always be one food spawning in adjacent to each snake, and there is always a food in the middle. Um, this does give you some interesting potential advantages um, in that, you know, if your snake's food is on the way to the food in the middle, you can, in theory, get a size advantage. This is why this game state is very pleasing to me, because it is a perfect line through. Both snakes can just do a straight diagonal run for the middle. We probably won't see that, but in a in a perfect world, um, well, we absolutely will. Let's see what happens. Um, give me one sec. Um, uh, okay, let's kick that off. So, are you Stark going to be drinks tea, taking each other out with a head-to-head? -head. Will they get to it this time? Are you Stark with a really pressing the advantage up to over double the length? And they oh, used it. Oh, they so used weak. that advantage. Oh. Pot, I mean, Emily, sorry, Emily. Tea for your next Battlesnake iteration. I, I, I think uh, seeking out food is going to be the next step here. Poor tiny yeah. Battlesnake. <laughs> 
Yeah, for sure. And it's worth mentioning, as I said, like, these snakes have not had long to, um, you know, work... But they started on Monday and they've been at a conference all week and now we're on the tournament. Um, but we do tend to see, like, a typical progression through, you know, the journey of snakes where it's like, avoid walls avoid yourself well actually maybe those are the other way around avoid yourself avoid walls happen around the same time um and then you start to make decisions about food people then usually start going for food and then realizing that growing too fast introduces the problem of pathing so instead of solving pathing they stop going for food <laughs> um so emily drinks tea is a, is a certain way along that journey um but congratulations to Arya stark for being our second snake going through so let me mark that game off and let's revisit the brackets mm-hmm so, as we said, two games from each group. So Arya Stark and he, him, his will now progress to semi-finals. We don't know which semi-final group they'll be in yet because we'll have to see the rest of them. But that is our first two snakes going through to the semi-finals. So next up is going to be Group B with CubeCon Cup, Sandy Snake and Cluda Snake. And Emily Drinks Tea is our first snake not to make it. Commiserations, Emily, but thank you so much for playing. And it's yeah, as I said, it's been a really short time. So it's fantastic to see a snake worming about in that time. Absolutely. So, <laughs> let's bring up group B. So, this time around, we have Sandy Snake in the middle left, Clueless Snake on the top right, and Cubecon Cup in the bottom left. Let me get a drink before we kick this one off. <laughs> um, and the start positions are uh, kind of all over the place. Clueless yeah, Snake yeah. has a... Go on. Yeah, Clear Snake has a reasonably unfavorable one. We've got people shouting out Sandy Snake in the chat. Hydrate or dehydrate. Thank you for <laughs> validating my decision there through the various. Um, we're good. Okay, let's kick it off. Mm -hmm. Oh, Clue the oh, Snake no. timing out and going up. And then we got a head to head almost immediately by Sandy Snake, who had the size advantage. Okay, let's do some replays there. Yeah, that actually that might not. Sorry, go on. Was that a timeout? That's what I'm looking for here. It doesn't look like it. It just looks like just not respecting bounds. Just um, the default move, if you don't send a response at all, chat is up. So when I see a snake go up like this, I assume timeout. Um, but we do have latency. So. Um, and then Sandy Snake grabbed that middle food, turned around, and took out CubeCon Cup. Um, so well done, Sandy Snake. We are getting some really uh, short, aggressive games. This is a turn <laughs> eight game. Um, you all did not come here to play. Um, no, no. Oh, we're hearing from Battlesnake Official that um, this was actually sending up moves. This was not a timeout. This was just uh, an unfortunate um, algorithm snafu. Mm -hmm. And the Clueless Snake did was genuinely clueless and did go up and out. So well done, Sandy Snake. You're advancing through. Let's cross that game off and get a rematch and see if Clueless Snake manages to avoid the wall this time. Clueless Snake has a little bit longer to, to turn. <laughs> so we've got... This could be a five, six, a six-turn game. Are we ready, chat? Bob Zox mm -hmm. has got 10 cents on Sandy Snake. I don't know if we can encourage that, but um, <laughs> good to see. We've got favoritism in chat already. All right. No, Clueless oh, Snake. No, Clueless. I mean, I guess Clueless has a direction, has a purpose, and nothing is going to dissuade them. Yeah, there's no false advertising here. You know, they said they were Clueless Snake and they went out straight for the wall. That's, they did, they, <laughs> they delivered what they promised, and that's all we can ask for and no more. I think what um, they've really done here is, um, They've, they've prevented the other battle snakes from demonstrating what they have available to us. I mean, Cubecon Cup is still a, a, a curiosity to me. I don't know what it's yeah. going to behave like in the next round here. So. For sure. Lots yeah. of questions. Yeah. And they're also, you know, we've got a lot of folks who are new to Battle Snake here, and they're doing a great. They're demonstrating uh, what happens if you climb with the wall, and we've got to thank them for that service. Um, we've got to thank them for that service. So that's that's Group B. Um, so we've got Cubecon Cup and Sandy Snake going through and. So, oh, Clueless Snake was Protokit. Protokit. Protokit was was giving me the smack talk yesterday, saying he was coming to absolutely dunk people today. Alex, what happened? Okay, so we're now into Group C with Purple Cubecon Snake by Never Snake Dev, SK Cubecon by SK, and Passivado by Passivadom. Let's load up that game. That's not where I want to be. I want to be here. Okay, um... So this is one of my favorite things about the um, the starting snakes when the 
game just goes, you know what, we're only going to use half the board. We want these snakes to be cramped. We want them to feel on edge. We want them to be pressured. So we've got Passivado on the middle right, SK Cubecon on the middle left, and Purple Cubecon Snake down in the bottom left. Bit of a congested start. Let's see how they do. Passivado was one of the finalists, worth pointing out, and did look dominating. So a little bit of an uphill battle for these other two snakes. So Passivado starting off strong. We're getting some good food, getting the middle food up to seven. Oh, and then it hunted out oh. SK Cube gone. This, yeah, I was about to say, a really commanding lead. That was scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just squeezing out the, uh, the opposition and then going for that head to head. It looks like we've got some uh, aggressive uh, coding here and I, I like it. This is a, uh... okay, as you know, Autoel Aurora, I have a, terrible habit of um <laughs> over reading snake behavior but like i don't know this looks like intentional aggressive behavior there on that that part um less so here that just looks like a random collision but um yeah well done passivado mm -hmm. oh we're, we're hearing from clueless snake um the repellent that was powering that snake was actually deleted on wednesday um so Protocate's not code. not entirely yeah. sure how it was even sending Ghost moves, code. so that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, F's in chat for Protocate, um, but well done, Pasavede, and thank you for sharing, uh, Protocate. We love to hear. We love to get the background, the inside scoop on the snake disasters that we see in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Ghost Repellent, Ghost Snake, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Purple Cubecon Snake and SK Cubecon. Um, their last chance to go through. Uh, we saw Purple Cubecon struggling to get any food. We don't really know what we're going to get out of SK Cubecon. It decided to go out of bounds rather than collide with the body of Passivado, which is a choice that yeah, I respect. Go out on your own terms there, hey? Yeah, exactly. So let's see, given the chance, what will they do? Um, both of them just hanging out. Oh, we've got some kind of simultaneous food gathering, um, but Purple Cubecon Snake edging ahead. They're now in neck and neck. These looking, these looking like random walks, which is always nice to see. Oh, keep, let's keep them going down. Ooh, yeah, plenty losing of that food size. available for both these battle snakes. Yeah, this is the fun thing with random snakes, where they start to just get huge really fast. Ooh, there ooh. we go, same choice. Um, got itself into a corner and then sent out of the arena. Um, mm. So yeah, as I was say, it's um, the food spawn quickly outpaces the rate that the random snakes collide with it, and so they suddenly have a growth spurt, which leads to things like this. Um, so well done, Purple Cubecon Snake. You are going through, and commiserations to SK Cubecon. Thank you so much for playing. And that's Group C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One group remaining. How are you feeling about your chances? Oh, Aurora? oh, for for the the test snake. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. No. Are you? We're going to see you in the finals. I am banking on a head-to-head -head collision by my opponents. Uh, that's the only way uh, <laughs> that this <laughs> test snake is going through. Perfect. Um, so alongside Qcon Cup Test Snake, we have Sandeep's Qcon Battle Snake and Ekmek the Snake. And if this is, it's confusing me because it's rebranded. But if this is the Samsung Qcon ba Sandeep's Qcon Battle Snake that I think it is, they were also a finalist. So it's great to see them back in a group. Let's check it out. Oh, what a pleasing color palette. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Ekmek the Snake at the top middle. Cubecon Cup test snake with the lovely little caterpillar head on the... It was little caterpillar, the one, that one. Yeah. A smart caterpillar. Actually, yeah. yeah. This is worth calling out. So, we we have persistent tournaments that happen quarterly. Um, the Was this the winner of summer? No. Yeah, so a uh, summer, summer league winner, uh, Smart okay. Caterpillar, uh, got to design their own battle snake customized head, which I think is adorable, which is why I, I think it's very great. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, and then Sandeep's Cubecon battle snake is in the bottom left. The so, classic beluga head there. Yeah. Belu <laughs> that's the beluga head. Nice. Yeah. I lose track of what they all are. Um, <laughs> There's so many heads now. So this is our last group before we go to the semi-finals and things really start to hot up. Let's see who's going to make it through. Ekmet the Snake going straight for that middle food, taking territory, and Cubecon Cup Test Snake has gone out of bounds. It can't uh, handle that bottom right-hand corner. It just can't. <laughs> is that, what, that one specifically? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then Ekmet the Snake with a head-to-head -head on Sandeep, which was narrowly earned because they were, head they were neck and neck on food right up until here. 
and then Sandeep's got nowhere to go. They can't. Well, they could go right. They could tail chase and go right. Um, but tail chasing is maybe a step beyond where these snakes were at the moment. And so they went up into the path of Ekmek the snake. Mm-hmm. So well done, Ekmek. You yeah. are going through. Great move, too. That's a that's a deliberate yeah. move. Seeing that length and then taking that head-to-head <laughs> opportunity. Beautiful. Yeah. That's what we want. That's always the, the, the fun qualifier on... Um, on all kinds of battle snake viewing is if that wasn't a deliberate move. <laughs> um, okay. Cubecon cup, Cubecon cup test snake in the top left and Sandeep's <laughs> Cubecon battle snake on the right. Let us kick it off. Cubecon cup test snake needs to avoid that bottom right corner. It has That's not. I see it. what you they mean. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Sandy. This is the um, outcome I wanted. Yeah, you know, this is the pace yeah. car bottle snake for you folks, uh, and you 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 passed it, which is what you needed to do. So I'm not sure the pace car metaphor holds up when you've got the pace car crashing into walls on the regular. <laughs> um, but it is nice to see a snake through. Okay, so that is our group stages. Let's go to the standings and see where the semi-final blocks land. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Arya Stark, Cubecon Cup, Sandy Snake, and Ekman the Snake in semi final A. Semi final B is He Him Hiss, Purple Cubecon Snake, Sandeep's Cubecon Battle Snake, and Passa Vado. And although there are four. So, go on. I was going to say, if you'll allow me to interject here for a moment, here, Joe, these are our, our top eight. So, uh, these fine folks here are qualifying for prizes. <gasps> uh, so, if you'll allow me to take a moment. So, um, Go into your screen. Those, those of you who are now in the prize tier, just to remind you what they are. Whoops. Uh, we Ooh, have, we so for you top eight, right now, minimum prize is getting that $50, uh, 25 each uh, from the Battlesnake in the CNCF store. If you manage to advance to the next round, uh, that goes up to $50 in each. And then first place, 100 in each. And uh, just to show off these stores for a second, what types of things does this get you? Uh, the Battlesnake official merch store has a variety of lovely prizes. The socks are a personal favorite of mine. Uh, the meme stickers are fantastic. Uh, the Chrome notebooks and of course, t-shirts and other uh, paraphernalia with the Battlesnake logo on it. Um, and checking out the CNCF store, there is a lot in here, let me tell you. Um, definitely take a look at all of the <laughs> different. I can't. Brands. I can't get over the Lego. When I first I saw that earlier on today, that I is, just could not believe definitely it. Definitely what I would be spending mine on. These are adorable. Look at that. <laughs> and the gopher. Oh. It's pretty fantastic. These are these are cute. Um, so definitely check out. These are uh, where you can redeem your various prizes of your choices uh, so those are the stores and that is my interjection thank you very much sorry joe let's, let's and what a going. fantastic interjection it was <laughs> thank you for taking us to the stores on an odyssey of spending our battle snake winnings on fantastic socks and meme stickers those meme stickers uh, to put some context on that um the battle snake community has given various hilarious terms to things over the years uh we have a battle royale mode where you know typical like battle royale game like there's a dangerous cloud that comes in and damages your snakes they named that the hazard source and that's a sticker uh there's always turn is it right oh yeah right 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 is the right battle snake move yeah (laughs) yeah yeah um you can't be wrong if you're going right joe there we go there we go you can't be wrong if you're going right and then that one in the image was top tier boomba um i can never remember these that fa- was it boomba is the collective noun for a group of rattlesnakes was that it? it's a, a roomba a roomba is a, is a collective noun for a group of rattlesnakes therefore yep. clearly uh, boomba. a boomba is the collective noun for a collection of rattlesnakes so yeah <laughs> perfect um I'm not going to deal with that chat message. Uh, okay, sure. cool. So, semi-finals. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Group A is Arya Stark, Cubecon Cup, 2021, Sandy Snake, and Ekman the Snake. Uh, we are ready to see those games. So let's dive in to semi-finals A. Great. So, uh, we have a relatively well-laid-out board here. No snake has a clear path to the middle. Um, They all have to go outside to get that food and come back in. We are at the level of competition now where we do do see more aggressive food gathering from these snakes, especially Ekmek. Um, 
should be a reasonably good game. Um, one thing to mention, although we are at four snakes per game, it is still only two snakes per game go through. So we'll be seeing, we'll be playing a first game, the winner of that game will go through, we'll play it again with the three snakes, the winner subtracted, and then one more snake will go through. Uh, we've mm. got we've got chat chant uh, <laughs> chanting for Sandy. Let's go, Sandy. Any other? Where are, do I, have, I don't think I've seen the owners of many snakes in the chat. We've seen Prodicit. Have we got any of the uh, developers in the chat here to uh, cheer on their snakes? Mm -hmm. Let us know. Let's, Definitely let us yeah. know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's kick off this game first of the semi-finals several snakes oh my god that okay we're gonna Ooh. rewind that and watch that there was a race for that middle food and ekmek did not know what to do and now sandy snake spent so long in that battle that they almost gave up the food advantage but cubecon cup just made a little mistake Ooh. Ooh. i don't That's really know what went on here first thing i want to point out 47 turns this is probably the longest game we've gotten to you can see that competition level rising and now let's go back to that fight over the middle just to really show yeah. what is happening here <laughs> So Ekbeck and Sandy both clearly going for the middle food, right? There is no disputing that. And then they get there and are both like, hey, I'm about to collide with a snake of a similar head size, abort, we're not going to go for that food. And then the beautiful dance begins. <laughs> and Sandy Snake took the tighter turn, got it, and then finished off. Oh no, Ekbeck went down into Arya Stark for a mutual elimination. But you can see... Sandy Snake was going to close that out. They were oh, they yeah. were going for it. Oh, yeah. um, and then during this dance, Cubecon Cup has been up in the corner, Completely minding their own business. <laughs> they got the, they got two foods, circle back round, come down with the size advantage, and Sandy Snake catches up, and then Cubecon Cup Snake makes an unfortunate mistake. Yeah, Don't and you... we, we see that timeout oh, there. Oh, timeout, timeout. Yeah, so there we go. We've got our first timeout. So it looks like they went out just out of a timeout. Really unfortunate. Probably something either glitch with a server or just something running a little bit long. Um, but they've got a second chance, but hopefully we won't get that timeout. Mm -hmm. So you battle so, take all fun and games until you start winning and getting competitive. And now you're yeah. allocating enormous resources towards maintaining and managing uh, your battle snake, which is indeed not a thing one should feel guilty about at all. It's This is the correct thing to do. Correct. Um, so chat, we're cheering Sandy, and that morale has worked. Sandy has gone through. Um, so now we've got a second attempt for Ayasak, Ekman the Snack, and Cubecon Cup. Um, and let's see. I mean, these all were looking pretty equal. We didn't get to see much from Ayasak because of that early head-to-head. -head. Um, and obviously Cubecon Cup had the timeout. Uh, it will be interesting to see if Ekman the Snack continues to go straight for the middle and how that goes without their, without being challenged to that middle position. Um, let's kick it off. So Eggman Snake did go straight for the middle. Oh, Ooh, oh wow. goodness! The same thing happened again. Arya Stark is just like all about mutual eliminations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a way uh, to play Battle Snake. Maybe that you're is. not playing to win. Maybe you're playing to prevent other people from winning. You're just playing to be an agent of chaos, just yeah. purely <laughs> taking other people out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Arya Stark. Arya Stark. Arya Stark wins it for Eggman the Snake. Well done. I mean, well done, Eggman, for getting through. But I mean. Really, this was Cubecon Cup slash Arya Stark uh, cl clenching that win, which does take Arya Stark and Cubecon Cup out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for competing. Thank you for competing indeed. So, um, I'm always scared at this point to go back to the brackets in case the semi-final B's wins are on there. So I'm just going to go straight into semi-final B. Oh, okay. Once again, the snake, uh, Battle Snake is like, we're going to use half the board. Um, we're going vertical this time. So he, him, hiss at the top. Passivado on the bottom. Sandeep's Cubecon Snake on the middle right, which for shall henceforth just be called Cubecon Ballasnake. Uh, or just Sandeep, because it's too long. Um, purple Cubecon Snake, bottom right. Um, again, all fairly even food. Not going to be much in it. Passivado um, as a former finalist, and Sandeep as a former finalist are the two to watch. Oh, we've just got he, him, hiss. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> this no. is going to be a spicy game, I think. It's going to be a spicy game. Let's kick it off. Okay, Sandeep already out. We're head to head with Purple Cubecon, and Passivado has the size advantage and is really gobbling up food at rapid rate. No one's able to really fend it off. The question is whether he's going to use it and turn around and start getting head to heads. 
or if it's going to squeeze itself out and run out of room while the others stay small, uh, which is a totally valid strategy. We see a lot of snakes staying small and just trying to survive until the bigger snake runs out of room. And they got head to head on Purple Cubecon Snake. Um, so he, him, hiss is probably going to struggle to catch up. We're going to be playing for space, really. And they've squeezed himself into a corner. Well done, Passivado. Wow. Um, so 170. We made it over 100 turns, over 150 turns, even. Oh, I mean, some great maneuvering there from uh, Passivito there. I just have yeah. to admire the the coiling up along the bottom, like right this path finding here, the entire edge of the board yeah. there, and forcing the opponents to fight it out on the, the yeah. other, you know. And know, this looks the board. <laughs> a pretty purposeful diversion to head to head there, which is nice mm -hmm. to see. Um, let's good. go back and see what happened to Sandy. They were eliminated really quickly by Purple CubeCon. Um, it'd be great to see if that was just kind of, you know, they were in the way or whether there was some... I love watching Snakes in Rewind. I, just, I feel like we need a, a scrub, like, you know, like the videotape rewinding um, sound effect. Uh, this looks like it was probably just opportunism. Um, yeah. But nonetheless. Also, in, whilst we're here, I just want to briefly point out something. Give me... Bear with me for a moment, chat. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to entertain myself for a second and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna check something so sandeep and purple we've got javascript and javascript and then he him hiss and passivado we have uh go and go okay right interesting he him hiss and passivado are on go sandeep and purple are on javascript and i don't want to bring language wars into this look at the latencies <laughs> We've got literally we've we've got sixty millisecond fifty sixty milliseconds for the two ghost snakes and over two hundred for the JavaScript snakes. <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay. We'll, let's, we'll let the tournament sort out the details here, Joe. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, okay. So well done. I've forgotten who won. Passive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Cool. But uh, the others still have one more chance to they get do. to that final. Uh, okay, we have he, him, hiss in the top left, purple cucumber snake on the middle right, and Sandeep's cube combat snake on the top right. Um, we're hearing from Cameron in chat that he, him, hiss is on an AWS server, um, in contrast to a lot of the Replit servers that we're seeing running. Um, is Replit a banned word in the chat? Okay, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> A band for is a forbidden term. Yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, I mean, in Replit's defense, it's been um, actually very effective, especially for getting started. Um, the 500 milliseconds is definitely an upper bound, but you can get right. incredibly far with a role-based snake, even with a fair amount of server latency. Yeah, um, It's actually quite incredible uh, to see how far right. one can go. Yeah, I mean, we have competitors who are like, you know, in high i think actually there might even be one t touching elite but like there is a very high ranked snake that's still running on the raspberry pi under a desk right ah uh, yes yes yeah. uh, that is hot soup hot soup runs on a raspberry pi locally um, yeah and uh yeah and it, it chugs away it, it is a very respectable battle snake <laughs> <laughs> um great question here aurora um do competitors try to keep the distance between the snake and the game server low and I guess they mean the snake yeah. server and battle snake servers. And it depends entirely upon your strategy. So there are some battle snake competitors who have been competing literally for years at this point. And uh, some of them have looked to reduce their latency because they are running rather expensive machine learning algorithms. So that can be an advantage. Um, however, I will let you know that on the battle snake roadmap, it's a little, little secret secret sharing here. Uh, we are looking at trying to increase multi-region uh, support to try and not have that be such an issue. Um, so today, um, Battlesnake servers do run in um, AWS uh, US West. Um, but don't you worry, folks, uh, for our international right. audience who've been very patient with us, uh, we will be <laughs> um, yeah. trying to even that playing field a little bit more. Yeah. And also just to mention, and we'll talk more about this at the end when we go look at the full league, but, um, you know, there is, uh, as Aurora said, latency you get very far you'll be surprised by how far you get without worrying about latency and it's like you know it's kind of like you've probably heard the whole rule of like you know you get 80% of the way with 20% of the work and then the remaining 20% is 80% of the work that's kind of where latency falls into that by the time you're worrying about latency you're at like such a high level of play that uh you know it's 
at that point you're like yeah i'm gonna go buy an aws a us server why would i not um not a us <laughs> sorry um an a west um but yeah okay let's get back to the games we, yeah. we've left group b hanging um, let's find so out let's... which final battle snake is going to make it to the finals uh oh yeah no. okay so he him hiss purple coupon snake or sandy coupon battle snake here we go so all no super early limbs. We've got a small size advantage from Heem Hiss, but very quickly growing. Um, Cubecon and Sandy avoiding food. Heem Hiss is going to run away with size if they're not careful. But it's Heem Hiss is starting to hover around them. I do wonder if there is some um, some detection of size going on there. Oh yeah, there we go. First head to head against Sandy. Sandy got too close, and Purple Cubecon Snake took themselves in out, themselves. <laughs> and they got the size advantage, which is notable. So yeah, this was just unfortunate from Sandy. They were just in really the wrong place, wrong time. Purple Cubecon, Purple Cubecon Snake has the size advantage here. So he, him, hiss has to go down. Sandy can go left or they can go right. They chose wrong. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate for Sandy. But um, he, him, hiss gets that head to head. And then Purple Cubecon Snake with its size advantage just gets into a corner. And as we saw from your snake, corners are tricky. You don't want to. Mm. You want to avoid corners. Um, and you, if you path the wrong way, you get to this position where here they should be going down for some reason. Who can tell? The brain of a snake. They go up, and then up they go through the top. Yeah. Um, well, so congratulations, he him his making it to the finals. Indeed. Let's mm -hmm. see those brackets. Let's reflect yeah. on where we've come from and where we are. Um, and while we're doing that, I'm gonna have a quick little look at something. So. <laughs> The exhibition finals were he, him, hiss, Pasavedo, and then we've got some upsets. Oh, we and Sandy Snack. Sandy Snack mm -hmm, was in the finals mm -hmm. last time as well. But Sandeep has been replaced by Ekmek the Snack. So we do have a different final situation, which is super notable because the finals were already very spicy. We have a poll running in chat. Yeah. If you want to vote for any of these snakes, who do you think is going to win? He, him, hiss, Sandy, Snack, Ekmet the Snack, or Passavedo? Drop your votes in the poll. Um, I'm going to vote. I'm not going to tell you who I'm going to vote on, though, because that would be naughty. Um, <laughs> and also, I would curse them because casters can never have favoritism. That snake will always lose. Um, so... Let's run back through the brackets and just give some thanks to the snakes who have not made it up to the finals with us. Uh, group A, we saw Arya Stark and he, him, his go through and Emily Drinks Tea fall out. And then Arya Stark taken out in semi-final A as an agent of chaos, taking out Cubecon Cup with them and winning that game for Ekman the Snake. Group B, poor Protokit, the ghost clueless snake whose server was deleted but was somehow still sending a move um ghost snake, <laughs> ghost snake the ghost in the machine uh taken out group b whilst cucon cup and sandy snake moved through group c sk cubecon um not making oh that was sk cubecon was taken out in a hilarious circumstance but i forgot now what it was um and then you of course didn't make it through which whilst we we mourn cubecon cup snake with its cute caterpillar head obviously we can't let the team win that's just unfair yeah that's okay it's, it's, I'll, I'll somehow <laughs> learn to survive I, I think it's it's actually kind of a, an unfortunate joke at that point that every battle snake employee has in fact a terrible battle snake uh so you know i'm okay with this some of us have several <laughs> <laughs> some of us have never not had a terrible battle snake um okay so um the finals games are still running which i'm i i'm gonna point out because the first match we have official confirmation is a spicy one so i'm very excited to see all of these again i want to remind folks that the finals are a bit different to the games we've watched so far the finals um are not elimination based they are the first snake to win three times so that's not necessarily in a row. It's three times total. Um, so we could be here for a while. There's four snakes. If every snake wins twice, that's already eight games. And then we need a ninth game to finish it. So we could be here for a while going back and forth. Let's kick off that first game because it could... Could be uh, a sweep and done. Or, as you know, the exhibition tournament gave us. We could have some surprises. So... This is a, this is a spicy corner. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable looking at this corner. All that there food, is... all those battle snakes. Oof, yeah. it's gonna be dangerous. Especially 
Ekmek and Sandy. No, sorry. Yeah, it was Ekmek and Sandy that were doing the mid run to the middle, weren't they? Yeah, I think uh, Ekmek is in the most dangerous position here. My my thoughts are with you, Ekmek. Really? <laughs> you you think Ekmek over Pasavedo? Oh, sorry, Pasavedo. I mixed up oh. the names. My apologies. Oh yeah, sorry. They are similar snakes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that corner is scary. But Ekmek and Sandy will probably run to the middle, so I think they'll be okay. Okay. This first of the final games. Oh, hang on a sec. We've got. Oh, interesting insight from Cameron, one of the snake creators in the chat. I think these four have been tested against each other a lot. Pasavedo's match history has a lot of games with the other three. Mm, so preparation. I respect that. Oh, okay, here we go. So Ekmek and Sandy mirroring each other as they run for the middle, leaving a gap for he, him, his to slide in and get that middle food. Pasavedo and he, him, his, the two ghost snakes. Um with the food advantage with Pasavedo just inching ahead. We've gone a long time without any eliminations. We're Isn't getting up to turn 100. Yeah, and they're all pretty so long. long. <laughs> Ekmek is the smallest. Oh my... Oh, this is getting silly now. This is starting to look like top tier. Like, this is looking like a, a full league game. <laughs> and these snakes have had a week. And we get an elimination. Sandy getting stuck in the corner. As Pasavedo and he and his are still neck and neck. Ekmek is going to be fighting for survival. Squeezed between two larger snakes. Oh, he oh, missed around corner. the outside, which is a scary place to be. Ah, oh, this game, we're over turn 200. Oh, and Ekmek oh, squeezed oh, out, and what oh, happened? Oh. <laughs> no! Oh, why, Pasavedo? What were you doing? You could have got out, friend. Oh, no. Oh, okay, that was huge. That was amazing. Um, it wasn't that long ago. I'm going to try and rewind and see what happened to Sandy Snake. Um... Okay, it was like 120 turns ago. Okay, Sandy Snake, yeah, they're in, heading towards the corner with a snake below them, a snake above them. Oh, too long to come back on themselves. This is already looking dangerous. They go for a food. Oh, yeah, they go for two foods. They tile upwards, and now their only way is through a snake that's far larger. So, yeah, yeah just never going to make corner. it out. It's a dangerous corner. We called it at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Seventh Parrot asked, what MMR is this? Well, I mean, like, seriously, that was like... Like, we don't often see games in any level of play that go that long without a single elimination. Like, that was mm -hmm. pretty, pretty wild. I mean, chat poll called it. He, him, his is currently the uh, chat favorite and has uh, won the first game of the final. Nice. How are they looking on the poll? So, yeah, 47 for he, him, his. And then 27 for Sandy Snake and Pasavedo. Zero for Ekmek. Chat, you are so mean. <laughs> Ekmek, you get my vote. Um, okay, game two. So that's one for he, him, his. He, him, his needs another two wins to make it. So much more, much more spread out board here. A pleasing diagonal symmetry. I, seriously, Aurora, I don't, I ran about this all the time, but I haven't streamed with a developer, with a, one of the Battle State developers for a while. Is stuff like this intentional? Because it feels like it has to be. Like the oh, RNG no, has some like simple rules in it to like make this, this, this symmetry, right? This like, is pure RNG. Trust the machine. Trust the cosmos uh, for producing okay. these beautiful moments for us. <laughs> Thank you, RNG Jesus. Okay, so Sandy Snack in the top right. Ekmet the Snack, middle left. He him hiss, bottom left. Passivado, middle right. Uh, he him hiss with one game so far. Will it be a sweep? Let's have a look. So Ekmek doing what Ekmek does, going straight for the middle, snatching it from the jaws of he him here. So we've got three snakes kind of neck and neck and Sandy Snake falling behind. Eat Sandy, eat. We've got one food. This it's the Ooh. the three green snakes. Oh, and Sandy's out by body collision, unfortunately. But the three green snakes are spending a good amount of time there just running for the same food. Um, These frightening unless... near collisions just constantly keeping us on the edge here. Yeah, they're just St all staying so close to each other all there's so that everyone is so proactively hunting for food oh he him his was an oh, unfortunate nice accident and then oh. ekmek as you said closed off ekmek not going into that food square because he didn't want to risk the head-to-head -head with the bigger snake guaranteeing their death this happens all the time we saw this happen in the exhibition where you get these you know you get these things where just the order of your decision rules where you're like hey i'm not going to risk that head-to-head and so you flip the coin, it goes wrong, when really you should have just looked a step further ahead and gone, but this square is certain death anyway, I may as well risk going up. Um, and then what happened to he, him, his? Just got tangled, at, I mean, a space it, too small for its large snake body. 
Yeah, could have could have tail chased Ekmek out of there though. Um, if it had gone up here, it would have survived. But I do want to call out that he him hiss did the classic move of refusing to crash into the wall and actually went back on its own body, which you've got to you've got to respect a snake that sticks to its convictions. So yeah, Pasavedo, one game for Pasavedo, one for one he game him for hiss, Pasavedo, one for he him hiss. So we'll see. We'll have to see. We don't have a, a clear leader at this point. Okay. Um, so we've got he and his bottom right, Sandy Snake middle, Eggman the Snake middle left, and Passavedo top left. Um, Eggman's got their clear, the clear route to the middle. They're the closest. They're going to get it easily. Um, Go for it, Eggman. No, you won't. Oh, but they, they did oh. it again. <laughs> Passavedo stole it. Oh, it's like a nature documentary. It makes me feel so bad. And now Ekmek is so small and getting squeezed from every angle. He and Miss also struggling to get sides and they crash into a body. Well, their own body, but they were going to die either way. Um, Sandy Snack with some good size here, but Pasavedo again with the advantage and it took out Sandy. And now we've got little tiny Ekmek, a third of the size of Pasavedo, just trying to... Uh, Hang out down the bottom here. Oh, Ekmek's got to eat. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'm worried Ek <laughs> this is this is interesting. Where we've previously seen Ekmek try to compete on size, but now it's practically not eating. I wonder if they do have, um, if they're doing some like, hey, am I the biggest? Maintain bigger size, or if I'm the smallest, try and you know stay out of the way and be defensive because they're doing a lot of tail chasing. Um, ooh, ooh, and yeah, Pasavedo. Oh, oh, oh. it's the squeeze. Pasavedo using their size brilliantly there. And yeah, the minute Ekmek went up into this narrow channel, into the half of the board controlled by Pasavedo, it was all over. If they had gone down, you know, they could have continued to spiral, could have gotten some more food along the way, but it's so easy for Pasavedo to come over and cut them off here. Um, well which, you know, having said that, Pasavedo <laughs> was only one move behind on death. Like, if, if Ekmek found another square, if they had tiled just a little bit different, if they'd gone up one here, this would have been a game for Ekmek very close mm -hmm. oh congratulations so, uh Pasvedo, who now has two wins and only needs one more win to wrap this up uh but, with uh, uh he him hiss in uh, second place with one win so far in the final okay still everything to play for though we've we've had we mean we had this in the exhibition where we had a, a snake only needed one more win and then we went to two three more games so let's see what happens okay <laughs> Sandy Snake, middle right. Uh, Ekman Snake, bottom left. He him hiss, top right. Pasavedo, bottom right. Um, I'm looking forward to the dance of Ekmek and Sandy. Let's see how we get on. Uh, Sandy made it first. Uh, oh, Ekmek oh. taken out to Sandy. Oh, and then oh, Sandy, okay. quick fire of limbs. So it is now the front runner against the runner up. This could be it. Pasavedo could could take this. This could be it. Or, or he him hiss could continue. Uh, with their run to the win, Pasavedo with a bit of a size advantage, playing very aggressive in the middle, taking up a lot of space, just beating he and his to the food almost every time. Oh, wow. Amazing head to head. That was oh, incredible. Well he, Pasavedo looked like they were heading down for food, and then the opportunity arose. He and his went left rather than right, straight into the mouth. Nice. Of oh, congratulations, Pasavedo, the Kukon uh, Cup tournament winner. Defwarting the Twitch poll. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, congratulations, Pasavedo. Let's, let's go back to the brackets. So, we've got three wins, Pasavedo. One win for him, Hiss. And then, not to be undersold, Sandy Snack and Nightmare Snake, although they didn't clinch out any wins, I said that was some of the longest, like, games without eliminations I've ever seen. Both snakes played brilliantly. I will. In, deeply enjoy Ekmek and Sandy Snake running for the middle every time. Please, both of you, make your snakes public because I just want to put them into like various contrived games to see how what ridiculous like patterns I can get from you running to the middle. Um, and then you both gave everyone a run for your money. That was really fantastic. Um, and congratulations to everyone who competed. As Aurora mentioned, as I'm sure we'll go for again. Although um, you know, Pasavedo is the winner. The top eight, everyone's been having prizes for ages, and the top four also get prizes, right? Everyone gets prizes. <laughs> um, okay, so let's quickly run through this. So, 
Um, do we want to review the prizes quickly? See who, what everyone got. So Pasavedo being the winner gets a special prize. Well, let me just bring it up on the screen again here for you, Joe. No worries. There we go. Sorry, so I'm very distracted by Twitch chat. Once again, to all of our winners, uh, top eight, uh, top four, and top uh, and first, of course, Pasavedo. Congratulations! You will be receiving um, gift cards for the CNCF store as well as the Battle Snake store. Uh, and uh, first and top four will be receiving a Battlesnake t-shirt as well. So wear that with pride, enjoy it. Um, we will be contacting you uh, soon to arrange delivery of these goods. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and again, just a huge thank you to everyone taking part, everyone watching. It is, and a huge thank you to uh, KubeCon for having us today. It's been fun to be, to be on a different channel. Um, I want to kind of round out with telling you about a couple of things we've mentioned and we've called out to a couple of things along the way. Um, if you enjoyed watching today and you want to see more Battlesnake action, um, you can head on over to our own Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Battlesnake official, where we do a variety of shows. We play games on Saturdays and on Thursdays. Um, there was a banner for it right down there. Tomorrow we have Snake Pit Live. Snake Pit Live is, um, I don't know how to describe it anymore. It's evolved a lot. We play really silly game modes with a kind of meta competition we have what's called the casters cup which is um where each of the casters have a, has a team and snakes on saturdays can come and join the casters cup so right now you can see the house of joe with 360 points because we're the best uh, we've got the house of curtis house of chris house of aileen last season's winner but we don't talk about them um and we do fun we do really silly game modes we do really big games with like 11 snakes on really small boards and really big boards and we push the limits of the snakes in really fun ways so that is tomorrow and then thursdays we have a rotating range of shows um we have coding badly which is a, a show where we push the limits of what you can do a battle snake um by just building stupid stuff that shouldn't exist like a snake made out of bash uh deep learning is coming up yes not in, next week the week after yeah the week after and uh i will be uh deep learning is the show where we deep dive into some educational aspect of battlesnake and we're actually gonna be covering the topic of, of observability and installing a honeycomb on uh, a battlesnake um by penelope zone uh, so that's gonna be fun i i love over engineered yeah. battlesnakes i'm really excited for it <laughs> yeah it's gonna be marvelous um, and penelope for reference is one of our top tier competitors um who emerged in the last league and is really uh, dominating right now um and then we also have the community corner where andrew um Keeps up to date what's happening in the Battlesnake community. We get to meet, uh, get to hear from a lot of players. They just did the Champions Corner, where a bunch of the winners from Summer League came on and spoke to Andrew and had a chat. Um, and it was great to watch and good to learn from them. Right now, going on, we have the Fall League. Uh, this is open, but there's still 39 days to go. And how these leagues work is we have a running um, scoreboard that you accumulate points in. And just like any online multiplayer game, you know, I'm sure you've played multiplayer games where you, you know you get bronze and silver and gold as you accumulate points your snake advances through the ranks and then right now you can see that we've got some snakes in elite some in platinum at the end of the month we take the snakes from these brackets and we run a tournament just like you've watched here today with different tiers of play so we'll have the elite tournament the platinum tournament etc um i want to call out one thing here you know during the show you had the question about ai we've spoken a lot about competitiveness with latency one of the really great things about the full league is that you know you can this will match you with snakes of a similar level to where you're at similar level to what you're able to commit if you you know don't want to get into machine learning but you just want to have fun and write some if statements and write some cool snakes like the ones we saw today you can jump in this get to gold get to silver play great games against the snakes in your similar tier and have a really fun time um, you don't have to be intimidated by the idea that there are you know some really intense snakes out there you can shoot for those if you want to if you want to get in, if you want to use this as an excuse to get into machine learning you can absolutely do that and see your points throw up the ranks if you are like me and have accepted that you'll be in silver league until the end of your days you can have fun in silver league come join us we have a good time um so that is full league really hope you join us um you can still enter the leaderboard is here it is battle royale mode um, so it's a different game mode to what you saw today, which is, is quite fun. Um, and we'll be kicking off the tournaments. If you don't want to enter, if you do want to watch, those official tournaments will be starting on November 13th with all of the um, snakes that have placed uh, by then. We've only got one in the Elite so far, which is long-time player Pruse. But by the 13th, this will fill up with lots of other things. Oh, yeah. Still plenty of time to join Fall League, even if you're thinking of starting building your Battlesnake today. 
Uh, so definitely hit up docs.battlesnake.com if you enjoyed what you saw today and want to start building your own Battlesnake. Uh, give that a go. Start with the um, starter projects. We have a Discord server where you can come hang out, uh, ask questions, get some help, uh, and uh, engage with the community. Yeah, for sure. So that is it from us. Thank you again. Thank you, Aurora. It's been super fun. Oh, we'll see you later. Pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye.